Good morning everyone. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 44. When my youngest daughter was about five or six, we spent a few days visiting London with friends. I can remember standing outside the Houses of Parliament, looking up at the statue of Oliver Cromwell and moving on. She can remember looking round and seeing no one she knew. She remembers a policewoman asking her if she was lost. The incident lasted only a few minutes before we were reunited, but she's never forgotten it. Sometimes it can appear to us that God is like that, that he's walked away and forgotten us, and we're bewildered as to why. That's what Psalm 44 is all about. There's a national crisis when God's people have been defeated and dispersed, but for no apparent reason. The writer acknowledges God's grace in the past in giving them the promised land, how it was all down to God, not to their righteousness or strength. But in the present situation, the song recognises the reality of innocent suffering, you gave us up to be devoured like sheep and have scattered us among the nations. All this came upon us, though we had not forgotten you. We had not been false to your covenant. In every generation, the Christian church can be bewildered by the opposition and suffering it faces. Now, there are people who teach that if you just had enough faith, you wouldn't be suffering. But this song shows us the opposite. Christians often suffer not because they don't have enough faith, but because they have faith and have been faithful to the Lord. Paul makes this point when he quotes verse 22 in Romans 8. Yet for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But the song shows us something else too. A reminder of the faithful love of God. Look how it ends. We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Rescue us because of your unfailing love. The writer appeals to the Lord's covenant love, his faithful, committed, inseparable love that will not let his people go. You see, the good shepherd will never utterly forsake his sheep. And I think that's why Paul goes on to write those marvellous words in Romans 8 as a concluding crescendo. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, we may be bewildered at times by our trials and can't make sense of God's purposes in them. But we can pray like the psalmist here. Lord, help our faith still shine brightly as we call out to you. Help us to rest on the promise of your inseparable love for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.